Hi everybody, this is Oksana. So if this looks familiar, it's because this design is based on an old video that I have in which I did something similar but I only used one wire. And so I was inspired by that design to kind of spruce it up a little bit. And this time I'm gonna use two wires and it gives a different look. And I think it looks really interesting and really cool. Here's what it looks like in the back. And it uses only round wire, 20 gauge round wire. And it uses a teardrop shaped stone. So if you wanna see how I made this, just keep watching. So I'm starting out with two pieces of 20 gauge round copper wire and these are probably a bit long but I was just practicing this design and um, my wires ended up being too short so I think that now I'm paranoid that they'll be too short and I cut them to be quite long so they're 20 inches long my dog ate my measuring tape and this is just plain round 20 gauge copper wire it's dead soft um, I purchased this on RioGrande.com if um, you wanted to get just a small little amount to practice with. You could get something like artistic wire at a lo local craft store. I just didn't have this in um, the color that I wanted because my stone is quite dark so I didn't want to use a dark color on top of my stone because I think it won't be very noticeable and so I reached for the solid copper and my stone is a teardrop shape which is very very important you need a teardrop shape stone for this design and it's going to be positioned like this with the point up okay this is not going to work with an oval or other shapes so teardrop shape stone and the size of it is about an inch and a quarter or if we're looking at millimeters probably like 32 millimeters or so so try to um, use a stone that is roughly within these parameters it could be a little bigger a little smaller but you know if it's a lot smaller this is not going to work too well on very small stones because there's going to be too much wire everywhere and not enough surface space um, it could probably be an inch and a half that should be fine but yeah obviously if it's really huge if you have a really big stone say it's two inches right look how much bigger that is than my stone then what I would recommend doing is sizing up your wires to 18 gauge because that's going to be a sturdier wire to trap and hold a bigger stone and the tools that you will need for this is wire cutters so that you can cut your wire and then pliers so that you can pinch um, or you know bend your wire in small hard to reach places where you can't do it with your fingers so it can be any wire cutters and any um, you know pliers that are meant for wire meant for jewelry but mine are the Swanstrom brand I don't know if you can see that I was trying to hold it close enough. Um, so these are the Swanstrom um, tools and they came in a set. There was also other pliers and round nose pliers, uh, but these are the only two that are needed for this design. The first thing we're gonna do is fold our both wires. We're gonna hold them both together like this and we're gonna fold them in half just a little bit like this, just gently, so we know that this is the middle of the two wires. Then bring them together so they're right up against each other, like this, and then just kind of keep bending them as you pinch them so they don't move out of place. So it's starting to look like this, so you want them to just stay right next to each other, and then see like right here, this is starting to crisscross, so I'm just going to put it back, fix the little crisscross, just like press down on everything to keep them lined up one right next to the other like this. And then just keep making that little loop smaller. 
Okay, you can try to press on it or you can just pull on these ends, whatever you're finding to be easiest for you to keep making it smaller. And then when it's about this size, so it depends on your stone too. If your stone's bigger, it could be a slightly bigger size. So for me, this is like 10 millimeters, slightly more, like 12 millimeters. It doesn't have to be like exact, but just roughly in this vicinity. What we're gonna start doing is we're gonna pinch this and hold it tight so it doesn't move at this point. We've shaped it to the size that we want. We don't want it to move. And now we're just gonna work on these wires. So if you notice, this is going on top and this is on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the one that's on top and we're just gonna curve it because we want it to now go underneath. And then this one that was on the bottom, we're gonna now curve it this way, okay? So it goes on top. And by doing that, we've made this little twist, kind of, I don't know what to call this, like a little wave, crisscrossing wave. All right, and then once you've done that once, that's all that you're gonna have to do um, the rest of the way, that same repeating pattern, okay? So this one is on top. So we're just gonna bend it underneath the other wire and then the other wire, we're gonna bend it on top, just like that. Okay, so the same thing it stays on top here. So we're just gonna underneath on top and then just keep going with it. Underneath, on top. And you can see if you're not careful here, you just try to do it really quickly, you might run into a situation where you have some uneven spacing and gaps. So you just have to be careful with that. And if that happens to you, you just try to like spread out that little gap and tighten it all up. But that's why it's good to do just one at a time and then take a look at how it came out and then do the next one. If you do too many and then you come back and you realize that it turned out uneven, it's gonna be hard to go back and fix the previous ones. So I'm just gonna do that a few more times and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a look and see if this is long enough. So everybody's little bends are, are gonna be different in terms of exactly how long they are. So I can count mine for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I ended up with seven, but the thing is, if yours are just slightly larger, slightly smaller, then you might end up with a different number than seven. So don't go by that rule. Um, the best way to see if this is the right length is to put this on your stone like this, just right at the tip here of your teardrop stone, and then kind of curve and bend this with your finger because this is going to be your bale. So the taller you make it, the bigger your bale will be and the bigger um, necklace you'll be able to fit this on. So if you have like a thick beaded necklace that you want to put through here, just keep it in mind and leave a bigger space. So I'm just squishing it here, right around the tip of my stone, squishing it just like this. So this is what it would look like from the front, from the side, and from the back. So when I look at the back, this is actually a pretty good um, length. So for me, the seven ended up being perfect. But for you, just take a look at your stone and see if these wires, you want them to be kind of right here 
on this edge. You don't want them to be too far down here because what's going to happen is they're not going to trap the stone really well and the stone will be able to pop out the side. That's why you want them to be a little further and you want it to be here because if you're holding the stone here, now we can't pop out the side because this part can't fit through it. But you also don't want this to be so far that it's like here because then what's going to happen is the stone's going to be able to pop out this way. All right, so it'll be easier to explain this to you once I bend these. So I'm just going to bend them and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so now that I've bent them, if I take my stone and I try to push it here through this hole, so I'm pushing it up, it doesn't fit because these wires are trapping it. Okay, if these wires were opened really wide, then the stone would fit through. Okay, so that's how you determine the um, location of your wires. They kind of have to be here on this little curvy A edge of your teardrop, just like this. Sorry, that was like such a long explanation, but I just really want to troubleshoot because I feel like when people have problems with this design, it's because they've done one of several things and one of the things is putting these wires in the wrong area. So their stone either pops down or they put these wires too close together and then their stone, like, see this, if this wire is like here on the very bottom, the stone will be able to just come out the side. But as of right now, my stone is not secure because I have to lock it in. These wires are not connected to anything yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, bend them onto the front of the stone. So here's what it looks like. And what we're going to do next is we are going to feed them through this hole, this little area that we've created in the very beginning there. So I'm just going to move one of these out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to start with this one here on my right. So I'm just going to take it, just kind of bend it towards me a little bit so I can grab the tip of it and I can curve it. All right, so I'm going to curve it so that I can fit it through there. So just like this. So here's our wire. We're just putting a gentle curve in it and we're fitting it through. Now our wires are starting to get twisted here. Remember how we had one wire right next to the other wire? So go ahead and fix the twist. See how I untwisted them? And just keep pushing this through. You don't want to pull really hard because that's going to move everything out of place. So I'm just gently pushing this down and as I push it down you can see it moves that just like this. And now, as it's going through here, we're just going to pull on it just slightly so you can see the top of your stone here. And then the wire is going this way, just like this. Now, before we do too much with that, we want to do the other side because that's going to allow us to kind of troubleshoot any spacing issues before we lock anything in place. We want both of the sets of wires to go through this gap, through this hole. So you can move your um, stone a little bit if you need to to facilitate yourself getting these wires um, through here, make that room because your stone is not secure yet. And we're just very gently and carefully pulling these wires through. Again, let's make sure they are not twisted through this gap here. Just gonna push just like that. Now I'm gonna take a look. Obviously it's looking kind of messy. So I'm going to try and just kind of slowly and carefully adjust these one side at a time. So this side has a little bit of a twisting going on. This wire here 
needs to be just a little lower than the other wire. As you can see, once I do that, you can see the twist disappears and I fix that. So I'm just looking at everything and trying to get it nice and even and symmetrical. The stone this whole time is not locked in place and it moves, which makes it tricky. But once it looks good, like this, like I think that's looking good. See my stone is tipping to the right if I let it go. So I'm just gonna push it back in the center, pinch it tight to keep it like that. And then I'm gonna bend this wire, these two wires here, from front to back, and then these other wires on the other side, on the left side also, I'm gonna bend them from front to back. So by doing that, the stone is a little bit more secure now. It's not constantly popping out. It's not 100% secure yet, but it's gonna be much easier from now on to work with it. And again, you wanna look at this spacing here if you pull on your stone, my stone does not pop out because the spacing here is narrow enough to where it keeps the stone from popping out. These little edges here, they're a little thicker and they won't fit. And then same thing here, it's trapping the edge of our stone so it's not going to come out that way either. I'm just adjusting this little bail portion because it still seems to me like it's a little bit more to the left than to the right. So I'm just kind of pulling it until I get it perfectly centered. All right, that looks good. So what's left to do is to finish off these wires here. So just pick one side that you want to start with. I'm just going to continue with these, so I'm bending them here all the way on the back. And what I'm going to do is I want to kind of tuck them in there. So I'm going to trim them, but leave myself a little wire end like this. So what's going to happen if I take my little wire ends and I kind of push them this way see what's happening to them so I'm just gonna sorry let me move this out of the way and zoom in a little bit so you can do one wire at a time or just try to manage them both and I'm just closing them up closing up that little loop that's been formed with them. So they're wrapping around this. See how they're wrapping around? They're going in there. And you can see their little ends right there. So what you wanna do is you just wanna push down on those little ends so they don't stick out here and you can't feel them. All right, that's really important so that you don't, um, they don't poke. So now we have these two wires here. So I'm going to look from the front again. If anything has changed or moved out of place, I'm going to fix it. So these two wires, they're going to come here on the back. And then we're going to bend them towards the front. Now they're kind of laying on top of those other two wires. Just gonna push on those other two wires a little bit. Cause they were starting to see how they were starting to separate and there's like a little bit of a gap forming there. So I was just trying to um, prevent that from happening. So I'm gonna try to bend these a little bit of a sharper bend, a little bit of a sharper angle. There we go. They, they were just going kind of curving around. I wanted them to be up higher by the bale. Like this, that looks better. That was my problem there. So I'm gonna have them go towards the front, wrap around this bale here, 
front of the bail and now I'm going to have them go to the back. So here's what that looks like. All right, and now if you want, you can kind of pinch that a little bit with your pliers. And that really helps it look more even from the front. Like that. And all that's left to do now is just to tuck these away. So we're going to bend them around the back of the bale here. So they've wrapped completely around and they've come back here to the back. And we are just going to trim them and tuck away those wire ends. And that's all that's left there to do. So I'm just taking those wire ends with my pliers, kind of bending them in that direction. And then I'm just pinching that closed, pushing those wire ends into here, into this area where they're not going to be visible, where you're not going to feel them. So they're tucked inside of the bale. And now if you just look at that from the front, you can tighten this little area by pressing on it with your pliers. If there's any of these wires that have moved out of place and you need to, you know, move one higher, one lower, you can do that. You can also kind of separate some of these wires a little bit just for looks if um, if they allow you to. Like if I pull on this wire. So just with my finger there, I separated these a little bit by pushing on this one, pulling it down a little bit. That gives you a slightly different look, but it's up to you whether you want to do that. Um, and you also don't want there to be large gaps between the wire and the stone. So if there's a gap, what you can do is you can take your pliers and you can just push down where that gap is and that's going to help press that wire down against your stone like this. So now you can see there aren't large gaps. They're very small. And if I pull down on my stone, it doesn't pull downwards. It doesn't move um, side to side or anything either. It doesn't, you can't push it up because this is trapping it. These wires are the tip of it. So if your stone was oval, it wouldn't have this little tip. And that is why it's much more difficult to trap an oval stone. That's why I said it has to be a teardrop for this design. So that's it. That is the finished piece. I hope that you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.